there's a new breed of power station just starting to hit the market and this one in particular I don't think has any competition. If you're following along with my Land Rover camper project, you might have spotted that I've actually added these Dabson power stations to the rig. The reason I'm so excited by this power station is it has a set of features that I've never seen before. The first is that they can charge really quickly. The next really fascinating feature is the way they're expandable. So I've got two master units here and they can actually be connected in parallel to not only double up their capacity, but also to almost double their output power in AC. So the next really cool feature that we've got here is the ability for these to run as a, an interruptible power supply or a UPS. Now that's something I've always been really excited about, but they don't all have it. These do, and that's really cool. The next thing that's really worth mentioning with these is the form factor. So they're sort of completely squared off at the top. There's no protruding handles uh, on the sides or the top. And that means they're really neat and they're stackable, of course, which works really well because they work so well together when they're all connected up. So the fact that you can just stack them in little towers like this, um, really brilliant. And the way that the handles are integrated within that square profile works so well. The next nice thing that we've got here is smartphone control. Uh, again, not all of these power stations have that, but that really adds to the utility of these because of course you haven't got to have eyes on them to see their state of charge. I can have this in my Land Rover powering the fridge and I can check its state of charge uh, on my phone. They can use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so if you're out and about away from Wi-Fi, you can still have that functionality if you're near to the device um, with just Bluetooth or these will actually connect to a Wi-Fi network and then you can monitor it from anywhere in the world. The, and the app itself is a real pleasure to use, really nicely designed interface. So great to see this level of polish coming on a product like this. The other nice feature that's worth mentioning here is they've got horizontally oriented AC output. So when you plug in your devices, the cables come out the side and they're not bunching it up against the floor. And with all that said, the price of these is still undercutting pretty much everything else on the market that I can see as well. So I'm genuinely extremely impressed with these at the price they are. Of course, this comes with all the other features that we'd expect from uh, power stations like this. They use the LFP battery chemistry, uh, which means you can have it in any orientation. They've got the pure sine wave AC inverter, built in with the four sockets on the end. Loads of high powered USB-C ports and USB-A ports and the standard cigarette lighter output and a built-in light as well. So some of the older generation power stations don't have the ability to be used as an uninterruptible power supply. So the idea with the UPS system is you have it in between your AC wall outlets in your house and then you connect up your devices to it. And if you have a power cut on your main supply, this will kick in and switch over and power your devices without any interruption at all. But I've been a little bit disappointed with older generation power stations because they're not really supported to function as a UPS. If you were to plug in devices to them all of the time, they actually use the inverter to power them and they say you're not supposed to leave them charging and running in that configuration so it's not designed for long-term use like that. These units on the other hand work as a proper UPS so if it's plugged into the mains and then you have devices plugged into the AC output it's using pass-through mains power from your wall it doesn't use the inverter and it's quite happy and designed to be left plugged in like that and it will just sit at 100% state of charge which as we know with an LFP battery doesn't really do it any harm. So if you have a power cut on your main supply this will switch over to its inverter AC output Output and continue to power your devices and that switchover happens within 15 milliseconds uh, which as far as I can tell is more than sufficient for uh, most electronic devices. So a really useful function here that gives it real day-to-day -day use around the house. So this can charge from 0 to 80% in just 44 minutes, which I think is super impressive uh, for a 1300 watt hour capacity unit like this. But a fun fact with this is if you connect solar input to it at the same time as charging from your main supply, it can actually take the power from that and add it to it. So it will actually charge at 1400 watts, which brings that charging time down. I know in reality there's not going to be many situations where you can use that, but it's quite fun knowing it can do it. The other really interesting use case for a device like this is if you're on an off-peak tariff where you have cheap overnight electricity, you can use these to charge up while the electricity is cheap and they make that really easy in the app. You can actually set this up so that it has a scheduled start time for its charge um, so that you can align with your off-peak rate. So really cool to see that nicely supported there. The other way that you might want to charge these is when you're in a car, especially with our Land Rover Overlander kind of setup here, we want it to be charging while we're driving around. And this is a really interesting area because a lot of people think these are quite limited um, in terms of car charging. And um, so if you if you use the car charger, it'll charge at a maximum of 100 watts while you're driving. And that's to protect your car's cigarette lighter output circuits. Um, you don't want to be pulling more than 100 watts at 12 volts from those. It'll likely blow the fuse uh, if you pull more power than that. And that of course does make this quite a slow charge when you're charging it from your car cigarette lighter. 
So what a lot of people actually do in that situation is they set up a system using a DC to DC converter um, to fake solar input where we know these will charge at up to 400 watts. So you can actually have a connection from your alternator to a DC to DC converter uh, to charge these much faster when you're in a car. So it is possible to do that. But what I've found is an interesting alternative way of looking at this is if you're using two of these and you've got two separate fused uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter outputs in your car, which our Land Rover does have, you can charge these at the same time so then you're essentially you're replenishing your storage at 200 watts so obviously these have their own inverters and they can power 1200 watts just by themselves individually but when you combine them with this parallel accessory they can actually power devices up to 2000 watts now that's not just this fake mode that you see a lot of power stations talking about where they say they can power you know over two kilowatts um, items that have resistive loads and what they mean is they're actually just running not at full performance so they'll they'll you know because it's a resistive load they can operate at that lower output this is actually capable of 2000 watts output when they're connected in parallel. But it doesn't stop there. Each one of the master units in that parallel configuration can then be extended with two additional extension batteries. So you can actually get six of these all connected together with the two running as parallel in each one of those with two extension batteries to get nine and a half kilowatt hours of total storage capacity with the ability to power 2000 watt devices. So the display is worth mentioning on these as well. It's a two color segmented liquid crystal display. So um, all of the data that you see on there looks super sharp. Looks like it, it looks at first glance like a really high resolution OLED, um, but it is just a liquid crystal display. The app itself works really well. Definitely a lot of attention to detail has been put into the, the app interface. It gives you a huge amount of control over things like whether these units will stay on when there's no load, uh, which is really useful when you're powering a fridge, which obviously clicks on and off. You don't want these going off. Uh, you want it to be available to supply power when the fridge comes back on so you can put it on this standby mode where it will never turn off uh, it will just be ready to supply power all kinds of other options including the scheduled charging and the visualization of your energy flow telling you which ports are supplying and how much power and how much power is coming in via solar or other inputs uh, it's all there in the app and really nicely displayed so I know it's hard to talk about price and value on a YouTube video because stuff goes out of date but uh, at the time I'm making this video uh, they've got a standard price on Amazon but they have this 300 pounds discount coupon that you can apply and I've actually got a 10% discount code that you can use as well. And that brings the price down at the moment to £599 for one of these units. And I think that is an incredible deal. Absolutely, it's just amazingly good value. If Dabson hadn't kindly sent me these units, I would, without a shadow of a doubt, buy one of these units at that price. I've actually enabled channel membership on this channel. So it's a kind of eclectic channel. I cover lots of different topics, um, all with the focus on workflow and usability from a general lifestyle tech perspective. So I'd love it if you would consider becoming a member. It really helps support this channel. Please don't feel there's any pressure to do that. Uh, my normal channel content isn't gonna change. It will still be available on YouTube here for free. I will offer additional perks for members though. There'll be some behind the scenes and kind of additional follow-up stories and, and side bits of information, but all my main content is gonna remain completely free. So getting a power station like this is definitely a fantastic first step if you're building an overlander rig in a in a 4x4 but one of these isn't enough to make an overlander by itself for that you'll want a really cool sleeping platform in your vehicle as well so watch this video next where I go into this design and build of my sleeping platform in my Land Rover and I'll see you there.